Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Rodman with Western Marketing. Just wanted to first and foremost thank everybody that is uh, watching this webinar today or in the future um, and taking time out of your day to do so. Uh, today, we've got Courtney Stowe with Humana uh, that is going to be going over Medicare Advantage basics and why you really want to get into the Medicare Advantage field. I know our screen here says dual special needs, but that is a training that uh, was last a couple weeks ago uh, that is available for your viewing too. So anybody that's on here that wants to learn about dual special needs, we've got that training done for you. Uh, just uh, respond to the email that I'll shoot to you at the end. A uh, couple of housekeeping things. If somebody in here can just, uh, in their chat, just make sure that uh, you can see our screen and just respond yes and that you can hear us okay. I would greatly appreciate that to make sure all audio is good. Also with that and the chat function, if you do have a question during the webinar, uh, you know, please type it there. We may you know, break it up and answer that question right there at that slide. But if we do not get your question answered, we will answer it at the end between Courtney and I or we will uh, reach out to you directly uh, via phone call myself or one of my other marketers. So uh, with that being said, you do see the QR uh, code that's there. If you bring up your phone, uh, pop that up. That actually will bring up a contact section for Western Marketing. Should you want to talk about contracting, uh, Humana related, any questions that's there, commissions, things like that. And then our phone number is there as well uh, so that you have access to that. Once again, you will get an email of the recording and some of these deck pages from me at the end of the webinar uh, so that you have that. Uh, Courtney, if you'd uh, click on to the next slide, we're going to kind of go over a few things before we get started on uh, Medicare Basics and Humana. Um, so here at Western Marketing, I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the support technology um, and integrations that, that we'll have. Uh, support. You know, as an NMO, FMO, whatever three-letter acronym you want to call us, that's there. Our job is to support you as agents. Our job is to make sure that you have the tools, the technology, the resources that are there to make you successful on a daily basis and help your business grow. Uh, we'll go over a little bit on just some of the technology that we have that's going to make getting into the Medicare Advantage space just that much easier for you. Um, you know, a lot of people are scared to get in the Medicare Advantage space because there's a little more work that's involved with it. But some of the technology that we have and that even Humana has uh, specifically allows you to quickly, efficiently uh, review your clients' uh, needs and then get them what they deserve with a great policy. Um, integration. Uh, we integrate with a lot of different technological platforms that are there. Um, we integrate with great carriers like Humana to give you guys the tools and resources and the you know, the knowledge that you need to be able to get into the Medicare Advantage space or whatever products we might need to be. So we really appreciate Courtney and Humana for hopping on and, and integrating with us and integrating with the agents to make things successful. I'll go to the next slide. Perfect. Uh, one of the techs and tools that's available to you all and through us here at Western Marketing and Integrity is Medicare Center. Um, Medicare Center is a single sign-on platform that basically will let you do everything from scope of appointment to quoting to the actual enrollment process uh, from start to finish. It's there for you. Uh, it is a CRM system, so that data that you enter in, and if you're in the Medicare Advantage space or if you've done prescription drug plans, that data entry of prescription drug plans of putting the name of the medication, the dosage, the frequency, the pharmacy, uh, put that in there once and it's going to stay there for you. So you don't need to go back and data enter that back into Medicare.gov or whatever it may be. It's a huge, huge time saver for you. Um, just recently, this last AEP, you know, agents that were doing any kind of telephonic sales, they were required, uh, telephonic sales with Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plans are required to uh, complete a call recording from start to finish. Uh, this system actually has that capability for outbound and inbound calls and is CMS compliant that will be stored for the 10 required years that you're there. So if you don't have that system or worried about it, take that worry off your plate. Uh, we have that system for you. It's a super simple process. We've got a whole training on it. Uh, we do individual calls all the time. So we can check that one off your list. 
another innovative thing that they have for agents is a personal website. Uh, when you contract through us, Western Marketing, as an integrity partner, you are going to be set up with a personal website that talks about Medicare, the basics of Medicare. Um, it will have your enrollment link for Medicare inside of there where your clients can go to and shop and look at different plans. Uh, it's a good educational resource, so uh, and it's free. So and just another value add that we have here uh, with Western Marketing and Integrity. Uh, if you'd hop to the next slide, Courtney. Oh, I think we might have missed one, but I'll just briefly mention it. Uh, we do have uh, Integrity Lead Center, which we'll be doing some trainings on that here in the next little bit. Uh, we do have the ability to get you in front of new prospects. So out of a click of a button, uh, some of them are live transfers, some of them are aged, some of them are mailers. Uh, there's, there's a lot of resources that are out there uh, for you to be able to get in front of more clients as well. Um, so I just want to give that quick plug of, you know, who Western Marketing is, what, what we do, and that we're here to basically be able to support you guys uh, and gals, whatever you guys may need. Um, one of those things is, you know, getting you in front of Humana, uh, getting you in front of just Medicare Advantage 101, uh, and why you want to be able to, you know, start marketing Medicare Advantage. Uh, Courtney's going to take over controls here in just a second, but, uh, you know, nine years ago when I got in the industry, um, I wasn't so hip on Medicare Advantage. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to it. Uh, I worked in the medical field that's there and the therapy departments and nursing homes. And it just seemed like there was just a big, a big clash that was there. So I, I never really made that leap to jump into Medicare Advantage and find out all the benefits that are available to clients. Um, and let me tell you, in the last four to five years, the networks, the benefits, the resources that they have for these clients. Um, really, if I, if I didn't continue, if I didn't go into the Medicare Advantage space, I would have been doing a dis disservice to you guys as agents. Um, and then the same thing with agents. If we're not at least learning about these plans, giving your clients an option of Medicare Advantage, I, I truly think you are doing yourself as an agent a disservice. Um, and then your clients too. Because they're going to get educated by somebody somewhere, whether it's the Joe Namath on TV, whether it's through social media, internet platforms, or you know through another agent. So um, glad you guys are on this webinar, uh, Courtney. Let's let's kick it off and let's see you know learn a little bit about Medicare Advantage and why agents really want to start uh, picking this up if it's not in their portfolio. Thanks so much, Andrew, and uh, I love how you queued that up because I absolutely understand where some agents and, and members and, and clinicians are coming from because Medicare Advantage can seem really, really complicated. So before I get into it, uh, I know I, you already introduced me, Andrew, but I'm Courtney Stowe. I am the broker manager for what we call Midwest South, which is Illinois, Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska. But I'm very happy to help anyone anywhere uh, to learn more about Medicare, Medicare Advantage, and how to do business with Humana. Before I get into Medicare Advantage, we're going to start with talking about some Medicare trends. It's kind of in line with what Andrew said about, you know, the, what's happening in the Medicare space and why now is a fantastic time to consider it. We will be very high level at first about what is Medicare Advantage. Some of it might be old hat for some of you, um, but then we'll get a little more complicated and dig into when you can sign someone up and the rules of the road there and then talk uh, to Andrew's point more about MedSub and MA and why it's so important to present both. So firstly, let's talk a little bit about the Medicare trends. Uh, this is something that you may have been seeing for a little while. Uh, the age in population for Medicare is booming uh, and it's only increasing. You can see that we expect those baby boomer age in population to peak in 2025. Uh, and just a couple years ago, I was saying, 10,000 people age into Medicare every day. I actually believe that number is closer to 13,000 right now. And that number is, plans to peak in 2025, but it's going to stay high after that because we just have such volume of people who are coming into the Medicare space. Now, if I had been giving this presentation just a couple of years ago, this next slide would have looked quite different. Uh, a few years ago, more people were going with MedSup and Medicare Advantage, and that has flipped. 
uh, in, in recent years. You can see this data is from the 2021 age in study. I expect those numbers to shift a little bit more towards Medicare Advantage when the updated numbers come out. So you can see here that 45% of people turning 65 choose Medicare Advantage, 36% of people are choosing Medicare Supplement. So both are so important. Uh, you may believe that, that one is better than the other for whichever reasons, but each of us as an agent may have our beliefs, but it's important that our members are the one to make the decision and what they, what they go with. And then from this, I tend to get why are 19% of people not picking either one? Lots of reasons. They could have employer coverage. Maybe they're a veteran, so they don't elect to go into either one. Um, or maybe they don't make a choice. One of my aunts uh, never chose anything. She just had original Medicare. And that was extraordinarily detrimental to her uh, later in life when she was unfortunately diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she had no maximum out of pocket. So I'm, gonna, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, Medicare first, and then we'll get into what is Medicare Advantage. So please, as we go along, throw questions in the chat. I'm always happy to answer as we go along. Before we talk about what is Medicare Advantage, and I'm again assuming that if you're a brand new agent, like I was when I came to Humana, uh, I didn't even know what Medicare was. So let's start there. Uh, Medicare is split into two parts. There's part A and part B. A lot of times Part A is automatic and people enroll in Part B when it's time to retire. So their A and B dates could be the same time or they could be different. Um, that just depends on their individual situation. Part A pays for hospital and inpatient care, skilled nursing, things like that. Part B pays for the regular doctor's appointments and outpatient care. So very, very general overview. Once they enroll in Medicare or get started with Medicare, the next step is to make a choice between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement. And whenever I presented this and educated clients on their options, I would say something along these lines that uh, you're looking at two sides of the same coin. On the one side with Medicare Supplement, you pay a premium up front. You know exactly how much you're going to pay every single month. It's predictable cost. And when you go to the doctor, apart from paying your Part B deductible, I'm of course talking about Plan G here, you typically don't have too many out-of-pocket costs with a Medicare supplement. But you're gonna pay for that whether or not you go to the doctor. So on the flip side, you have Medicare Advantage that you a lot of times will pay nothing for, doesn't cost you any additional premium, and you only have co-pays, which I will talk through when you go to the doctor. And so that was kind of the key up to getting a feel for what my client might want to do. Do they want to lean towards MedSup? They like that predictability. Or do they want to only have out-of-pocket expense when they use the plan? And this is before I even talk about extra benefits. So feel free to use that or not, um, but that is a way that I kicked it off with my own client to help them understand. So from there, what is Medicare Advantage or Part C? So we talked about Part A and Part B coverage. Uh, that, that is when you're on original Medicare, your bills go straight to Medicare and it's the government that's paying those claims and you have your deductibles and percentages on original Medicare that you would pay. When you go with Medicare Advantage, you're bundling that together and you're choosing the quote unquote Medicare Advantage version of those A and B benefits. The bills, instead of going to the government, are going to go to that private company that has the Medicare Advantage plan. And as a result, because the federal government is no longer paying those claims, they are going to pay the private company to administer those benefits. And so because private companies are able to manage that care, and they have many, many tools and tricks to help people either be healthier or manage costs, they are able to add extra benefits and even reduce the cost that somebody might pay if they are using just original Medicare, like having a maximum out of pocket, for example. So there are advantages and disadvantages to it. So it's important to know both sides. And this isn't, of course, an exhaustive list. This is a general list of, of some of the perks and thumbs ups and thumbs downs. Uh, of course, Medicare Advantage plans are, are famous for and marketed for having extra benefits. They most of the time include dental, vision, hearing, hearing aid benefits, gym memberships like silver sneakers, 
A lot of times they have over-the-counter benefits. I'm getting ahead of myself again. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, in many cases, for the most part, you'll see that costs in an Advantage plan are cheaper than Original Medicare. Uh, remember, on Original Medicare, you're mostly paying 20% of the Medicare allowable amounts, and a lot of times a Medicare Advantage plan has a flat rate, uh, like a primary care physician being no cost uh, for many plans. So that's just an, one example, and I'll show you more of that later. Most MA plans are offered at a zero premium. So it's not going to cost anybody anything to enroll in these plans. And as I mentioned, they'll only have costs when they go use the plan. Uh, a lot of times I'm asked, how is that possible? And I mentioned that because the bills are no longer going to the federal government, they pay the Medicare Advantage companies. Um, and all of our members are still paying their Part B premium. So they are paying for it. It just doesn't cost more for them than the cost of their Part B. So that's the way I explained it. Use that if you'd like. I'm happy to, to talk that over with you guys again. And again, all Medicare Advantage plans have a maximum out of pocket, which is something that original Medicare does not have. Disadvantages, there could be a network of doctors, so they can't go to anyone. Now these networks are really typically vast, but that doesn't mean that everybody accepts the Medicare Advantage plan. They might not, and the members should know whether or not their doctor will accept their plan before they enroll. Um, some services might need a prior authorization or a referral. Some HMO plans do require referrals. Uh, PPO plans don't. Um, and in many cases, uh, I think 52% of Humana's HMO plans do not require referrals, so it's not always the case. Uh, but there could be some extra hoops that somebody needs to jump through in order to see a specialist or to have an MRI or a surgery um, and go through a prior authorization. And the biggest disadvantage is they aren't available everywhere. Not every county has a Medicare Advantage plan. It could be co totally different from one county to the next. So each, each county could have a totally different selection of plans available. So I'm going to keep on going. Uh, Andrew, please let me know if there's any questions we should chat about. So you betcha. Nothing right of, now, but uh, we'll keep on rolling. Perfect. Uh, so types of MA plans, as I mentioned, there are a few different types. There's HMOs. Those are, you gotta typically stay in the network. You can't go outside the network or you'll end up paying the full cost of the visit. Uh, so if you have an HMO plan, you'll wanna do your due diligence with doctors. They do sometimes require referrals from the primary care physician. A lot of times uh, our new age in clients are very accustomed to that with their group coverage requiring referrals and having networks. So not usually a giant hurdle for most of the plans that at least I wrote when I was an agent. CPOs are a little more flexible. They certainly have large networks. Uh, most of them, including Humana, have national networks. The, especially Humana includes Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I like to throw that plug in there um, on our PPO network. So really fantastic coverage and does have some flexibility to go out of the network for care if needed. And then a fee-for-service plan is literally that, fee-for-service. Uh, it does have networks, but as long as the provider is willing to accept the terms and conditions of the plan, the plan will pay. So even if they are out of network, but they're willing to accept the fee schedule for that plan, then the member can go there and it, it works very well. So not as many fee-for-service plans these days, usually HMO and PPO. Here's an example of what some costs might be. So I used a plan from Iowa. It's our PPO plan, the most popular one we have, just to give you an idea of what those costs could look like. Uh, an inpatient hospital stay, I love to use an example from when I had an inpatient stay. I had a neck surgery um, and not fun, but it, and it cost me quite a lot more than what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, it would have only cost me $325 on this plan. But because I'm not on Medicare yet, I had to pay probably close to 4000 I had a large deductible, medical deductible that I had to pay, and uh, it was very, very expensive. I'm glad I had it, but still, it cost a lot. Uh, so this plan, as you can see, is $325 per day, days one through six, and then nothing after that. So the most it can cost is around $1,800. i am not doing the math here, but around there uh, for any one hospital stay, even if it's a lengthier one. No medical deductible, no prescription drug deductible. Some do have those, so be sure to check the summary of benefits for the plan because it may have those things. This plan just typically doesn't. Uh, primary care, as I mentioned, is zero. That's a lot cheaper than original Medicare. It's, it doesn't cost anything to go to your primary care doctor, and a specialist is just 35. 
And the most key feature, if you're somebody aging in that I can't stop talking about is the maximum out of pocket. If you're just on original Medicare, the sky's the limit. It can go as high as anything. And uh, you know, if you've got something really wrong, that those costs can mount. A Medicare Advantage plan is going to put a ceiling on it. So once they've spent three thousand nine hundred dollars over the course of the year on medical expenses, they don't pay anything else for the remainder of the year. So I just had a client uh, of one of my agents who has pancreatic cancer and went to Mayo Clinic and was able to hit the max out of pocket by about March. Um, unfortunately, thankfully she's doing better, but her expenses stopped early in the year. Let's talk about the extra benefits. And I know I glossed over what is Medicare Advantage. I, I Please, if you have questions about that, I'm happy to circle back. I'm going to spend probably a, the bulk of the time on election periods just because there are so many sales opportunities and I want to make sure we cover those well. So please ask questions if you want me to circle back to more details about what is Medicare Advantage. We're going to talk a little bit now about the extras built into the plan. So this is a, a shameless Humana plug here. Uh, this year in 2023, we invested over a billion dollars into our Medicare Advantage plans. If you have never looked at them before, this is the year to do it. Uh, we had a tremendous AEP as a result, and uh, the extra benefits in the plans are so incredible and robust that you just can't help but feel like offering these to your members. So extras that don't come with original Medicare that are very typical in Medicare Advantage plans. I mentioned dental. Earlier, uh, for example, the plan I showed you has $3,000 in dental with a $500 flex card to add on for dental, vision, or hearing services. So that's just an example of how much dental you can get out of some of these plans. Uh, I, I'm i jealous. I pay for dental, and it's not that good. So I, I don't want to wish my life away. But man, being on these plans sounds amazing. Routine vision and coverage for glasses or contacts. Uh, is not typical in original Medicare either. It has to be uh, medically necessary for dental vision and hearing for original Medicare to cover it. And most dental vision and hearing visits are not considered medically necessary. So these plans will do coverage for hearing exams, hearing aids, glasses, contacts, uh, and routine visits with an audiologist or an ophthalmologist. Transportation benefits are included in a lot of plans these days. Uh, help with rides to and from doctor's appointments or silver sneakers facilities, and even some of our dual special needs plans have coverage for things like Lyft and Uber, and they can go wherever they want with that. So really improvement on those transportation benefits. Silver sneakers is a no-cost gym membership, and they can use any one or two or three of 16,000 plus locations nationwide. So lots of options for people to use a gym, and I have some Great stories about my own clients who really dug in and used Silver Sneakers. There have even been Silver Sneakers marriages where people met by going to Silver Sneakers classes and got married. So I just think that's adorable. I love that benefit. Uh, really cool addition. My own uh, father has that Humana Medicare Advantage plan. And for the first time in his life, he is going to the gym. <laughs> I can't believe it. OTC benefits, so that stands for over-the-counter, so over-the-counter items like pain relievers, vitamins, band-aids, all kinds of things uh, are included in every, almost every plan. Some have food allowances, uh, so our dual special needs plans, people can buy healthy foods with benefits included in the plan. And GO365 is a rewards benefit for people doing healthy things like going to Silver Sneakers. They get gift cards for doing things that help keep them healthy. So that's a very high level rundown of some of the extras. There's even more. Sometimes people can get home care or funding for uh, you know, non-slip rugs and grab bars for their home. There's so many extras to try to meet people where they need to be met and help keep them healthy and avoid hospital stays and things like that. Any questions there? Otherwise, we're going to kick into talking about when you can sign people up because it's very different from signing people up for a Medicare supplement. Uh, there's there's no questions, Courtney. I just kind of try to reiterate back to and kind of recap where you guys are at. You know, when we have somebody going on Medicare, whether they go supplement or Advantage, they they basically have you know, one, they have to have A and B to get into a supplement or an Advantage plan. They have to enroll in those two to be able to get 
into a supplement or an advantage. Um, you know, if they stay just with their original A and B, um, you know, like Courtney said, the, the, the amount that they could potentially pay past the deductibles and coinsurance that they have, there is no ceiling that's there. So no matter how healthy they think that they may be, and they have their original A and B and they're not paying anything else or doing anything else, um, probably not the best decision. So really important. That's why we need to present these two different plans. Uh, that are available, supplement or advantage to them. Um, you know, as Courtney said, there's there's different enrollment periods when we can enroll these individuals. And I still have some seasoned individuals that have done Medicare for a while, and they think the only time that they can do business um, and be able to do these enrollments is during AEP, which is not true. So Courtney's going to go through some of these enrollment periods with you guys and uh, show you that you guys can get set up the right Medicare Advantage uh, and start writing it now. So go ahead, Courtney. Sorry to interrupt you there. No, absolutely. I, I appreciate that conversation. And uh, the the risk is just too high to not help somebody make a choice when they turn 65. Uh, and I, I wish I could show you some of the bills that my aunt ended up having to pay because she didn't choose something and this was before I was really in this business to to know better to help her now I'm I bird dog my whole family I don't let them get off scot-free they gotta all talk to me before they my mom turned 65 in May and she's already sick of me so uh, yeah it's the risk is too high to not make a choice so enrollment period uh, this I really like this slide it kind of looks at a calendar year for you guys and gives you an idea based on where we are. So right now, I'll, I'll start with OEP because that's the election window we are in. Um, so we'll talk more about that, but January through March 31st uh, is the open enrollment period. And I'll, again, I will tell you kind of what that is for, who can make a change and, and why. Um, the next one down talks about a quarterly SEP. If somebody has Medicaid, so dual eligible individuals. And you, if you want to learn more, you can refer to that previous webinar that Andrew and I did together to talk more about dual eligibles. Um, but you can see that last once per calendar quarter from January to September. There's five star plans in some places in the country. You can free for all enroll into five star plans. That's wonderful. Uh, we mentioned the AEP. That's the, that is the most open election period there is all year long. And you can see it's very short. So it's, that's why you see the commercials going bananas and, and everything so much of a frenzy. October 15th through December 7th is the window of time where anybody can change their Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plan. You can make multiple decisions, and it's the last application in that sticks for the remainder of the year. And then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about IEP and other SEP opportunities. So throughout the year, there are tons of different special election periods or SEP where you can enroll somebody into a Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plan. Now, if you're familiar with MedStep, typically you can enroll anytime as long as they can pass underwriting or they have their general enrollment window. When they turn 65, um, there's, there's few times where somebody can automatically get a MedSup. Uh, the beauty of Medicare Advantage is as long as they have an election window, there are no health questions. There are never any health questions with Medicare Advantage. In fact, you're not even allowed to ask them health questions. You, they can tell you their health, but it's, it's, a require, it's not a requirement to ask about their health and, and to get them into a plan. So uh, let's get into OEP. So OEP, again, stands for Open Enrollment Period. It is the, the situation we are in right now, and it only applies to people who currently have Medicare Advantage. So it's not going to help somebody who has a Medicare supplement and wants to make the change or somebody who has never opted in for uh, any plan. Uh, they can't make that change now either. So uh, it is a one-time opportunity to change from the Medicare Advantage plan they have in place now to a different MA or MAPD, Medicare Advantage, or Medicare Advantage with prescription drugs. They can get out of the plan they have and just return to original Medicare, don't recommend that, without a PDP, or return to original Medicare with a PDP and potentially enroll in a supplement if that's what they would like to do. So that's the election window we are in today. If you hear somebody say, yeah, I made a choice in AEP, 
maybe I don't really like it. Maybe it doesn't cover my new drug I just got prescribed. Whatever the case may be, if somebody is expressing dissatisfaction in their current Medicare Advantage plan, you can educate them that right now they can make a one-time change to a different Medicare Advantage plan or disenroll. So look at the bottom. It says you cannot market OEP. So you're not going to hang a banner or a billboard that says it's OEP, everybody time to change. But if somebody is dissatisfied and they express that to you, you can help them. You can also market other SEPs that we'll go into next. So that is what the OEP is, and that's what you're allowed to do. Initial election window. So when somebody turns 65, my mother is a great example. Uh, so she turns 65 in May. Her A and B dates are May 1st. So she has the three months before that, the month of May, and the three months after that to make her decision on what she would like to do. So I've already told her what she wants to do, but promise. But uh, so February, March, and April is, are the three months that she can decide beforehand, of course, the month of and the three months after. Uh, so she's already waiting to make her decision. She's got her appointment set up and is ready to go for her uh, May 1st effective date. Uh, so if they want to use uh, Medicare Advantage or prescription drug, it's IEP. And if they are enrolling in an MA only, so that's a Medicare Advantage without drug coverage attached, uh, they would use ICEP. The good news is if you're using electronic enrollment tools, like what Andrew spoke about earlier with Medicare Center, you don't have to remember that off the top of your head because when you choose the plan, it will help you select the correct election window. We're also, of course, happy to help if you want to give us a call uh, to know which one to choose. Another one, the, the reason I ordered these this way is because these are the ones that either were asked about the most or that are the most utilized at this time of year. Um, since we're not in AEP, this is what we will be looking at. So you can see this slide has a lot on it. There's a lot here. Um, this is talking about somebody who is dual eligible. So they are low income, they have Medicaid and Medicare. So that's what dual means. And they can enroll into a plan. So if you look at the left-hand side, this is for somebody who currently has Medicaid. So they didn't just get it, they didn't just apply and qualify, or they didn't just lose it, they just have Medicaid. They can change, if, if you look at when it occurs, January through September, once per calendar quarter. The election code is in the bottom left, MDE. Again, you don't have to commit this to memory. Uh, very happy to send you our election code job aid that describes all of this, but if you, you're going to maybe use MDE a lot if you're using if you're working with the lower income population. On the right hand side, if somebody does have a change in status, so maybe they just got Medicaid, or they used to have it and now they you know their income has changed, so they have a different level of Medicaid. Whatever that case may be, they have a change in their Medicaid, so they have three months to make a change in their plan, and that election code is MCD. For some reason, I think of McDonald's when I hear that, and it helps me remember change in status. I don't know why everybody uses their own brain tricks to remember these things, but uh, yeah, MCD is the election code for a change in status. We got a new leader at Humana, and she says we have too many acronyms, so I agree. <laughs> I agree with her. Uh, the next one that I want to talk about is if somebody is, typically we're seeing people turning 65 and we're enrolling them right away. But if somebody stays working, which is more and more common these days after they turn 65, they have an election window for when they do decide to retire down the road. So if somebody is deciding their, their employer group coverage is no longer the, the best fit, it, they can also sometimes get out of that even if they don't stop working. So as long as they have an end date to their group coverage, their employer group health coverage, that EGHP that you see up there, you can use SEP, LEC, stands for losing employer coverage, and enroll them into Medicare Advantage or prescription drug. So that is your election window. And I, I sat down with a lot of people that were well over 65 that were still working, weren't planning to retire yet, but they were paying several hundred dollars a month for their group plan and that just wasn't necessary and in many cases that group coverage wasn't better than what they would get on medicare in fact a lot of times it was worse with large deductibles so 
they could they made the choice to get out of that and go into their Medicare plans, save their employer money, and uh, they were very happy. So those are things you can listen for when you're talking to people who are already over 65. Others, now there's three on this screen to talk about. Uh, so in the green box, you can see there's SEP MOV. So that is for somebody who's moved. Seems obvious. If you are moving to a new service area, so that doesn't mean you have to move across the state line, across the country. And sometimes it, you're just moving to a different county, even if it's only five blocks away. As long as there's new plan options in the area, maybe there's a different Medicare Advantage plan. Doesn't mean you have to even choose that one. But if you're moving and it's, it's across a county line, you have an SEP to change plans. So SEP, MOV, for somebody who has moved in or out of a service area. Incarcerated individuals, so if somebody is coming out of prison, uh, they have an SEP to elect a plan. So I know some agents who live near facilities and uh, make it a point to help people coming out of prison to get their coverage. A lot of times uh, Medicare coverage is suspended while somebody's incarcerated. And so when they come out, they have to reinstate that and they can get a plan. So just keep that in the back of your mind. You, you hear and see lots of things when you're out talking with lots of people. So um, the one on the right is, I would say, probably a little bit misused right now. And that is an SEP for government declared disasters. So there's a ton of disasters out there. Every state, it seems, has counties listed on that disaster election window. When there is a disaster, they will put a time frame on it. So from this date to this date was the disaster period, and the SEP lasts until X, Y, and Z. So I'll use Iowa, for example. There was a, a disaster listed from mid-December to early January, and the election window goes until the end of February. What that means is they would have had to, one, reside in the area where the disaster was located, had to have been eligible during that time for an election window. So maybe it was their IEP, maybe they aged in December 1st. So they had an election window during that time and they missed it because of the disaster. Or maybe the person who helps them make their decisions, their power of attorney, their, you know, whoever helps them decide, missed it or was, was affected by the disaster. That gives them the ability to change using SEP DST as you can see on the right side of the screen, to take advantage of that election window that they otherwise missed. What I see happening out there Court. is, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna, and, and you can continue with your thought. I just gonna kinda make sure everybody knows that Humana makes it super simple uh, when you get contracted in their portal. They, they have a whole list of these and keep them really up to date for you guys. Um, when it comes to this disaster, because they are time frames, so they're not going to last forever, and you do need to reside in that county. But the big thing to make a note here that some of our seasoned agents that's there, they needed to have an election period that they missed. So, like Courtney said, that IEP. If they miss that, then they're going to be able to utilize this DST um, or the the special election period for that. If they utilized it. It's, it's null and void. So just wanted to make sure to, to remind that, but they do have a nice job aid resource that shows all those um, millions of them that are out there. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I appreciate that uh, because I do see a lot of agents see a disaster and they'll just go right anybody they can, even if they didn't miss an election window. And I mm -hmm. that is to me not something that I would put at risk. I would not risk my contracts or licenses for using this election code in bad faith. Uh, so make sure that they really do need to use it. They missed it and they had an election window. Maybe even if the disaster wasn't the cause, but they had to have had an election window during that disaster period. And I, I see agents willy nilly out there right in business because they're with DST all over the place. And I don't. I think that there will come a time where that that could be a problem. So just make sure you're using this the right way. And uh, to Andrew's point, that they did miss a valid election period, and that's why you're using it. Happy to help. I know we're kind of blowing through these SEPs and all these election windows, and it it could feel like drinking from a fire hose. And it does at first. It did at first for me. So 
happy to circle back on any of these and troubleshoot maybe if you have a client you're sitting down with and you're not sure if you can change them now i'm happy to to troubleshoot those those cases with you to make sure you feel comfortable and we're doing the right thing i know andrew's happy to do that too i'm volunteering him you betcha uh, other lesser known scps so contract not renewed if uh, if there's a plan exit so let's say a carrier decides oh we, this plan isn't working anymore we're going to pull it out and that that would happen you would know what was coming well before aep started we'll let you know um, if that were to happen but if it does happen and somebody was on that plan they have additional time to utilize a contract for not renewal so december 8th through the end of february whether it's a leap year or not whichever is the last day 28 or 29 SCP NON for non renewal. And the one on the right is probably one of the most misunderstood, but it's very useful. This is SCP OCC, stands for other creditable coverage, meaning somebody is enrolled in a drug plan, whether it's through Medicare Advantage that has drugs attached or it's a standalone drug plan. And they don't need it because they already have drug coverage elsewhere. So the most common person I'm talking about here is a veteran. So a veteran who has VA healthcare, they have creditable drug coverage through the VA. If they are currently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug coverage or a standalone PDP, at any time of the year, you can get them out of the, the drug coverage they have because they already got it through the VA. And if they don't need the extra drug coverage, they're not using it, why have it? You can get them out of it and into an MA only plan any time of year. Something I found a lot when I was an agent myself were veterans who were enrolled in a med sub and a PDP that they were not using in any way. That's not necessary. A lot of it, I don't think that the agent before me did it in bad faith. It could have been they've never, they didn't know that they were sitting down with a veteran or maybe that person had never applied for VA benefits. There could be tons of situations. But I saw it all the time, and you can help get somebody out of the plans they're not using and into an MA-only plan that won't cost them anything. So that's SEP OCC. Normally, I spend a lot more time describing that. So again, please don't think that you have to remember everything we're talking about now. Uh, you can, of course, watch this again or uh, let us know what questions you have. Happy to talk them over. The last topic. I want to cover is again to reiterate why it's so important to cover both MedSup and MA with your people turning 65. Keep in mind, you are here to help somebody choose for themselves. Yes, we can do recommendations as agents. We can educate and say, this is what I would do maybe in your situation. But ultimately, it's up to our customers and it's crucial that they know the full story. So I put kind of some pros and cons in both sides. So MedSop has predictable cost. You can go anywhere that accepts original Medicare. Um, you know, little to no cost sharing, and it's very simple. It's kind of set it and forget it. Easy to use. Um, kind of the downsides is you're going to pay a premium even if you're healthy. You know, the plan doesn't doing anything for you because you don't need it, which is a great thing. We love healthy, but, uh, you know, you're going to pay regardless. My grandma was so stubborn, she, you'd have to drag her to the doctor, and she was paying $350 a month for her Plan F before she passed and was never, never using it. I wish she had, but uh, you know, that just was a lot of out-of-pocket expense that she didn't need. Not everybody's going to qualify for a med sub. There is underwriting if you're not in a guaranteed issue window. So if it's underwriting, written business, I see in all these Facebook groups all the time, people trying to get a med sub for somebody who has a medical condition and it's not always very easy. So there are health questions sometimes. And then you would need to add on additional coverages if you need it. So drug coverage, dental vision, gym membership, all of those extras we've talked about just don't come with med subs for the most part. Uh, Medicare Advantage, we talked about a little bit, no, low or no premium. The co-pays are regulated by CMS and are typically low or uh, lower than original Medicare extra benefits we talked about, vast hospital and doctor networks. So yeah, you can't go anywhere, but there are tons of options. 
Uh, you only have out-of-pocket expenses if you're using the plan, typically, unless it does have a premium, it could. And then the downsides, you know, you could need some prior authorizations or referrals for some services, um, no underwriting or health questions. Uh, so that is kind of the two sides of the coin that you've got to explain to somebody. But this last slide is something that I wanted to share with you. We did some research and focus groups about people who have switched from a Medicare supplement to Medicare Advantage. And of the people that made the switch after they were not educated in that first appointment about Medicare Advantage, they were only sold to MedSup by their first agent. You can see on the left-hand side that a lot of those people felt really burned by the agent who didn't show them both options. So that's not what we want to have somebody walk away from an appointment with us is feeling like they were undereducated or, or burned or had a bad taste in their mouth. As you can see the quote from somebody who did make the switch that was not first educated. And then I'll draw your attention to the right of the screen. Uh, you can see it's asking, had you previously interacted with the agent that enrolled you in the MA plan? And you can see most of the time, somebody did not go back to the agent who sold them the MedSup if they were not first educated about it by them. So most of the time, they go shop elsewhere if we aren't doing our full due diligence to educate the membership on both MedSup and MA, it's likely that you might lose that business down the road when they do end up finding out what Medicare Advantage is and that they were not properly educated. So I don't want that to happen to any of you. Um, so we'll move on from that. I just want you to see what happens if somebody doesn't feel like they were properly educated at that first appointment. So um, that's what I have for you today. Please ask questions should you have them. Uh, or reach out to Andrew and uh, at Western Marketing or myself. Uh, we're very happy to talk about this as much as needed. Awesome, Courtney. Appreciate that very much. Uh, could you go back to that last slide that you had there with some of that data? Um, and just sure. want to make a couple couple of points here. Um, you know, we've got a lot of agents um, that onboarded with us in the last year or two, and they made the leap of faith. Um, and they, they got into the Medicare Advantage space, and especially some of the rural areas where you're at, you know, the, the telephonic sales and the people calling in on the advertisements on the TV were just so high. Um, and not that those type of agents are bad, not that call centers are bad or anything like that, but the boots on the ground type of people that are meeting people face to face, whether you're meeting in their home across the kitchen counter, or you, they're meeting you in your office, um, is completely different. A lot of those telephonic sales and those agents that are there that are doing that, it's a one and done. They get them enrolled and they may never see that person again. So that that Medicare beneficiary is out there alone by themselves being forced to call a company rather than their agent for assistance when they need help or some, some life event changes that they need help modifying their Medicare. Um, so it's it's really really a big opportunity for agents to get in the field that are that are really boots on the ground, the face to face type, to say, hey, I'm your agent, I'm here for you, um, and you're presenting both options and just being an educator um, and helping them make the right decision that's there. And more times than not, that's where you are you're gonna have a lifetime client. Not to mention, you know, the referrals that come out of that whether it's a DSNP or if it's just a regular MAPD with those extra added benefits that they get. Um, some people getting the over-the-counter card for 125 bucks or whatever it is in your area. Um, 125 bucks to one person is not a whole lot of money. 125 bucks to another individual uh, may be the difference between, you know, getting their granddaughter a birthday present or whatever it might be. So it can be a huge, huge referral source for you. So that, that slide's really impactful. The first time that Courtney showed me that, I'm like, hey, whatever we got to do, I want to be able to show this because it's, it, it just really drives home that you guys need to present or try to present both options to your clients so they're educated, number one, um, and that you guys make them a lifetime client rather than just a, a one sale that's in, in your numbers that's there and we you know make that sale and forget it. Okay. Um, you can go to the last slide if you'd like, Courtney. I'm just going to kind of recap a couple of things here. Um, 
for those that are not in the Medicare Advantage space, never been, um, you know, there, there is some learning that you need to do. Okay. So little requirements to actually go ahead and start selling this. And I'll put this in the email for you. So you have a quick link. Um, number one, you have to have a health license. Um, number two, you will have to go through a training, what is called a hip. Um, it's an annual training that you'll do. Uh, there is a, a cost that's associated with that. Uh, the first time you do it, you're probably not going to like it so much, but the second and third time it's, it's a fairly easy process to go through. Um, you actually get a discount if you were to contract with like Humana and go through their portal, uh, to, to bring that cost down, but that AHIP does need to be completed. And then there is an annual certification that's required by the carrier so that you're up with the times on how they do business regulations, uh, that's there. And then the, the products themselves. So there is a little bit of upfront work to get that done, but don't worry. We can help guide you through that process. That's there. Um, like I said, you do it once and then it's, it's all downhill from there. It's pretty easy because there's a recertification. They're a lot more simple. Um, so if you guys decide guys and gals in there in here and want to decide to, you know, to do that, um, you know, I'll send you an email after it. Uh, but we'll also send you kind of some fact finders because a lot of individuals that are in here may have a current uh, book of business, a final expense clients or just health clients, people aging in. And you just don't know what quite to ask. Um, so we do have fact finders that are set aside specifically for Medicare appointments. So you don't need to be the expert. Okay. You just need to know the questions to ask in order to see if you have the ability to help that individual out. Um, whether there's a special election period for them or, you know, just whether they can change or not, but there'll be a certain set of questions and some of the most simple ones is if you just go in there and ask them, you know, Hey, you no, know, I helped you with your, whatever policy you just sold them, but who do you have your Medicare with? And they're either going to say, I, I have no idea, or, you know, they're going to tell you exactly what it is. And a lot of people associate their Medicare card and just, you know, Hey, do you have a red, white, and blue card? And then you have that information from that card. And then we'll be able to see whether they have a supplement plan or an advantage. Maybe they actually have some assistance with prescription drugs or Medicaid. Uh, once you find that stuff out, um, what our job is here is to kind of help you guys out to see, do they have a valid election period right now or a special election period to be able to change plans or in first time enroll into plans? And that's our job here to kind of help you guys do that. So know that you're not alone. Um, Courtney's great resource. Humana's great resource. Um, we've got a whole health marketing team that's over here that helps agents get into the, the Medicare space. Um, if you're already in the Medicare space selling Medicare supplement, we need to try to get you in so you can learn about Medicare Advantage. Same thing, Medicare Advantage, if you're only doing that, you're closing yourself off too. We need to get you educated on MedSup so your client has that opportunity. Um, I'd say one of the other opportunities that you all have, especially with the older population, Courtney mentioned it a while ago, um, a family member, I can't remember Courtney who you said it was, but they were paying upwards almost four thousand or four hundred dollars a month um, for their supplement plan. Um, we know supplement plans they will go up because most of them are attained age, so it's going to go up every year after age sixty eight. Um, but then they're going to have rate increases that are there, and unfortunately, if we become too unhealthy, we can't switch plans. I've seen people paying upwards of $500, $550, upwards of $600 a month for a plan that's there. And they need to see other options and have their eyes opened up and see if it's going to be a, a good source to be able to switch or if they should stay on the same plan. So you can create a, uh, you know, you can create a lot of help and you can create a lot of business for yourself uh, as well. So, um, once again, our information's right there. Uh, we have the 800 852 7152. Um, our, my email address is there if you want to email me uh, directly. And then that QR code, if you scan that, that'll bring you to our website. And it tells you a little bit about who you are, who we are, what we do, um, the partners that we have. So, um, Courtney, I really appreciate your time. We're going to have some more webinars down the road. We're going to get a little more in depth in Medicare Advantage on the next one. Uh, and then we've got one that's set up after that where we're going to go into kind of more prospecting. How do we actually make sales? How do we get in front of more people? 
what are some of the resources that you have through Humana, through Western Marketing, so it makes you more and more a successful agent and that you can serve your community and make sure that the plans that you're presenting are, um, you know, the best for your clients. So, uh, Courtney, once again, appreciate your time as always, my friend. Uh, we'll see you again shortly. And thanks, everybody, for attending the webinar. Have a great day. Anytime. Thank you.